So I didn't get to go to Nats this uh, this time, unfortunately. Um, hopefully I can make it uh, next year. Um, but a buddy of mine went, and he sent me a couple of goodies. And one of those is this. This is the uh, Armo Hobby P51B in a 172nd scale. Now, I'm not normally a big 172nd scale guy, but uh, this Arma Hobby, they make some really good kits. Um, I did a lot of work recently on a uh, Arma Hobby um, Hawker Hurricane Mark I that was reboxed under Edward, and I posted extensively about that on my modeling page. Um, I posted that I got a couple new kits. The other one I got is I got the Edward Wildcat, and my buddy Jeff Cadenhead jumped in and said, hey, I want to see you build that P51. Um, so uh, that, that was about all it took for me to... Uh, think that I need to do this one. So let's do a little bit of review first. Um, the the box uh, the box comes in. Uh, Arma Hobby does this thing where they they have these uh, these end end opening and opening boxes, and I'm sure that's a cost saving measure. I don't really like that, but it also doesn't really matter. I mean, it's one of those things that I wish it was like a regular box that I could pull the top off and put the top on because it's really easy to put the built model in the box and store it while you're working on it. But I'm not going to fl fault the uh, Arma Hobby for doing that. <clears throat> the, um, but the box art is absolutely lovely. Features uh, Jim Howard uh, P-51B um, flying through a formation of B-17s with a flaming Fock Wolf going down. Um, Jim Howard was an ace uh, in the 8th Air Force. And he was uh, one of the original Flying Tigers. So he's got uh, Japanese kills as well as German. Very famous plane, um, Ding Hao. It comes with markings for several planes. Um, most There's some British ones. There's uh, one in the Pacific. An F-6C, which I think is a recon plane. So that means it has parts for a recon bird on it. That's kind of interesting. Mustang III, that's a British British version. And a, more and another Pacific uh, P-51. Oh, that's actually European. Another European P-51. So uh, the markings aren't exactly exciting. I mean, there's a lot of P-51s that I think people want to build, but their markings aren't necessarily what's going to make you build this model. But let's have a look at the actual kit. Um, it comes in these typical uh, Eastern European packaging, which has these uh, sealable um, ends with a stick them on them that fold over and stick. Um, Edward does that as well. And that's really nice because you can pull the parts out, look at them, and put them back in without having to tear the, the plastic off and um, throw that stuff away. That's that's pretty cool. Now, I've looked at the instructions, and uh, they're pretty pretty good. Um, the kit comes with uh, some decals, and we'll talk about that later. Um, a big set of clear parts with a lot of extra parts. So basically, you can build any kind of P-51B from this kit, which is really great, because uh, if you want to build an F-6 or, uh, you know, a P-51 with uh, Malcolm Hood or, you know, an early P-51B, all the parts are present. And that's that's really, really great. I think that's really great and very innovative. So, again, I'm not going to worry too much about the box. Um, but it's got a set of decals that comes with plenty of markings. But what's interesting, and again, I'll talk about this later, but it has four sets of stencils. That's really cool. Um, it's got a little bit of photo edge, which, eh, you know, may or may not be useful. I don't know. Um, and it comes with a mask for the canopy. It looks like it was cut on Aura Mask. Now, as a um, as a guy who runs the uh, Cutting Edge Software Group, I have some thoughts on on masks for uh, canopies. And the Aura Mask is is a good masking material. Aura Mask, uh, I believe this is 410. Um, but but um, Aura Mask is a good is a good masking film. But as you can see, all this stuff is separated. Not that that matters because you're going to be sticking these pieces in the individual frames. But unfortunately, Aura Mask isn't ideal for canopies because it doesn't necessarily do well over curved surfaces. Um, a far better choice for this would be Tamiya Tape. Um, but this is what they give you. But at, at, at the very least, you can use this to scan and make your own masking template. So... Uh, I, I'm I, I I don't know I'm skeptical that these masks are all that useful but maybe they are we'll see. Now the instructions themselves are uh, pretty amazing. They're very very well done. 
The color call call outs call for uh, they're done with uh, Hataka AKRC Life Color Ammo Humbro Vallejo and Tamea Paints. Um, I use a, a AKRC and uh, Hataka a lot, and obviously Tamea, but I have some Life Color. I'm very happy that they they uh, give color call outs for Hataka. Hataka is fantastic paint, and I will be using Hataka paint on my build just to demonstrate how magnificent it is. Um, one of the really neat innovations they come with is this kit has a uh, color color in the instructions, which is nice because you can kind of see what color things are, not just a color call out, not just a number. Um, in this case, you can see the interior green pieces, some silver pieces, and uh, tan pieces for the canvas. Um, yellow yellow is actually the wing top, and then this black is the uh, non skid non skid. Uh, paint that was applied to the wood the wood uh, floor of the p51b um, they they come with different seats it comes with a later style seat like you see in a p51d comes with an earlier style seat which is more common um, it's got several different radio configurations and that's really good because you know they have markings for those uh, uh, English English uh, p51s as well as the uh, Pacific versions I'm not entirely familiar with radio configurations of p51s but Apparently, Hitaka has gone the extra mile and given us that. There are stencils for the radios. That's really cool. A little tiny detail. Um, probably hard to see, but still, nonetheless, pretty cool. Um, the cockpit itself looks very detailed. One of the things that really stands out is if you look at the uh, the hood um, for the uh, cowling, um, they have molded on the hood the, uh, the de-icer vents. Uh, on the top of the cowling, and I've never seen that before, even in 48 scale, on anybody's model. That is super cool. That's that's very neat. That is very neat nice touch because I add these details when I scratch build my cockpits because I'm well aware of it. Um, looks like the rudders have the North American symbols molded into them, which is pretty nice. The instrument panel has a decal, which uh, which I always get excited about because that means that you're going to be able to do a very nice decaled model. Um, make a very good instrument panel. Probably doesn't need a whole lot of edge. I mean, it looks like a very beautiful, a very beautiful set of moldings. Again, just going through the instructions, you can kind of see the layout of how everything's done. Is and they give you different uh, options for different versions. This is going to be for the uh, the Recon F6. But uh, look at the oxygen hose and the uh, the emergency pump, the emergency hydraulic pump. It's all there. There's a little bit of photo edge for your uh, for your uh, radiator grills. Um, they even do a color call out that's correct for the P51B for the, for the wing. Um, if this is kind of a obscure fact, but people who build Mustangs know this, that the earlier P51s and some of the early P51Ds, they didn't fully paint the wheel wells. What they did is they would, uh, they were made of the aluminum skinning and the only thing that was primed and painted was the, um, the stringers. And you can see the stringers are, uh, they show them yellow, that chrome, chrome yellow, that's actually very accurate, as well as the, uh, um, the uh, swing spar. So, uh, so that's really cool. So far, I mean, this is a really impressive little model. Look, the uh, cockpit even has stenciling decals. I mean, this is really, really good. That's, that's amazing. Um, the parts in general, at least in the instructions, look very good. The instruction, the uh, assembly looks very straightforward. I mean, I don't know how this thing fits, but if it's like the Hurricane, it's going to fit very well. Um, anyway, the, as you can see, the assembly is pretty basic, but there's a lot more cockpit to this model than, than you might realize. And one of the things that's different about this particular model is, again, it comes with all the parts you would need to make just about any P-51. It's got uh, different tails. It's got, it's got the... Uh, the filleted tail. It's got the uh, Malcolm canopies. It's got. Um, it's e they even put the slide for the for the Malcolm hood. It's got the original style canopy, and all of it is posable open. And that's very different for 72nd scale. Most 72nd scale models, you get a closed canopy, and that's all you get. Um, got some drop tanks and ordnance. Again, plenty of stenciling for the for the ordnance. Um, very impressive. And then of course your your various markings. Now, the one thing I would complain about if I was going to complain would be I don't, I don't really find these markings to be all that exciting. <coughs> um, there's a lot of really good-looking P51Bs that people would want to do. But at least you get a lot of options. You get a lot of different options here. 
<clears throat> but none of these are really uh, grasping my interest. Um, and here's a, a captured P-51B if you want to build one. The Japanese were flying around. And that, that's very different. I will be using these. These are something I picked up quite a while ago. These are uh, Kits World decals. And, of course, I have uh, the 4th Fighter Group sheet. I've got Ralph Kid Hoffer. I've got uh, um, everybody's favorite, uh, Don Gentle. Um, here's Vic France, who I built Vic France's plane at 48 scale many years ago. And that's, he's, he's an interesting guy. Um, that's, uh, what is it? Touch of Texas, I think that is. Or, uh, and then, of course, uh, Ill Wind from Cowboy Magara. So this is a pretty good sheet, the fourth fighter group sheet. I will probably be doing Don Gentile's plane just because I think that's really good. But at some point, I'm going to buy the, more of this kit, and I, and I really want to build Hoffers. So, uh, so that that's uh, this is just a really exciting model for me. I can't wait to get started on it. Um, here's the clear parts. Um, I'm not a big uh, I'm not a big reviewer. Um, I'm not going to take high detailed photos of these. Um, you can find better photos um, of this stuff just about anywhere. And uh, but I'm just going to go over it and give you my thoughts. I, I find that this particular molding is very good. One thing you do want to be very careful of, though, is all the molding on the edges. If you aren't careful, you will damage the clear parts when you try to remove that or even sand it. So you want to be very careful removing these, these things from the clear. And how I recommend you do that, and I know there's a lot of different ways people do it. Um, the way I do it is I use... A JL seesaw, um, and that's that's. I'll just demonstrate that really quick. But this stuff is really fragile, so you you want to be very careful how you do this. You don't. What you don't want is the part to bend, because as soon as it bends, it'll crack. So you just use the JL seesaw, which will not put any um, stress in this angle, which causes the crack in the plastic. Rather, you can just cut it off and that way there isn't any pinching or shearing force and it comes off pretty easy and just like that that's free now even though even though I'm not necessarily going to build these parts there's a little cleanup I have to do there but that's actually very simple I highly recommend just removing all of these clear clear parts from this from the sprue and I recommend doing it early in the model modeling process and the reason I recommend that is because again if anything presses against these these lever arms essentially they will literally just shatter a nice gouge right into your clear part that you cannot fix but if you cut them out they're really easy to remove and, and polish up and, and you can't even tell so my recommendation is probably the first thing that anybody should do is go through and pull all of these clear parts, except for the wing lights and, and various things like that. But pull all the, the canopy parts off so that you don't wind up with a, uh, a, a, a sprue scar that will make you really wish you had done this earlier. And then just stick them in a plastic bag and they'll be good to go when you're ready to glue them. Um, there's only two sprues for this particular model, and they're they're very they're very well done. Um, one of the things that's really interesting, and it's kind of hard to see, I don't know if if this is going to get picked up by this camera or not, but one of the things is, is they've molded um, the rivet patterns, and uh, there's even texture on on the wing flap, and that's kind of cool. It's hard to see though. I don't know if you can see this on my phone or not. But, but that's pretty cool. But the, uh, the parts are all super detailed. I mean, that, that tail wheel right there, I mean, that's incredibly well done. This is, this is a beautiful, beautiful part. Here's the, uh, here's the rudder pedals. Again, this is just a be beautiful little kit. Um, you've got two different styles of exhaust intakes, or exhaust, not intakes. Um, you've got the shrouded exhaust and then the uh, unshrouded. So you've got a couple options there. The landing gear doors look just exquisite. I mean, this is really nice. Um, here's the, uh, the where the cockpit is. And, uh, I mean, you can just see for a 70-second scale, this is, I mean, this is just incredible. You know, it, it will be a lot of fun to paint and detail this 
And, and when I take photos of it, it'll probably look like it's in 48, maybe even 30 seconds scale if I do it right. But here's the uh, here's the oxygen hose part that uh, that I was looking at. But all of the details there, the ribbing, and then of course a highly detailed uh, hydraulic pump. This is a really really well done model. This is really good. Um, here's the uh, instrument panel. Well, we've run into our first flaw. Let's see, I don't know if you can see this or not. But this model actually has a mold sink in it. Let's see if we can see it. But right there, there's a heat sink. You know where the plastic, uh, the plastic sinks a little due to the the mold. When when you have a too thick of a plastic, the hot plastic in the center causes a little indentation. But that is a sink mark, and it's very noticeable. So that will have to be removed. Not a big problem, but uh, I guess it's not perfect. Shocking. Um, here it comes with the two different style tails. Here's the uh, here's the filleted tail, which you do see on some P51Bs. And then here's the regular non-filleted tail. No flash. The molding is very crisp. Just This is just an exquisite model. So, oh, uh, one thing I do want to talk about. Here's the... Uh, well, where is it? Here is the wing... The wing gear bay. So that's actually not bad, but look how thick those spars are. That doesn't look right. I'm probably not going to do anything on this particular version, but that's one place where if you wanted to add a little detail, you might consider redoing that. Again, it would be a, some work, but that really just looks kind of like thick. Those, those things look way too thick. That doesn't look right. And there's no there's no holes in them or any of that stuff. So so maybe the wheel wells look okay. You know, but honestly, who looks in the wheel wells anyway? But but if, if this if there was one gripe I had about this, I guess it would be that these uh these spars are a little too thick in scale. And uh, again, I'm just nitpicking at this point. This this is an exquisite model. I would build I would build nothing but 70 second scale if if this was the norm. Anyway, that's my uh, quick quick look at uh, the Arma Hobby um, P51B in 148 scale plastic wise. So let's look at the decals real quick and then we'll be done. The decals are by TechMod, and uh, they they look like they're printed very well. Now TechMod, yeah, they're made by TechMod, uh, TechMod of Poland. Techmont decals at one point had a bad reputation. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they had a bad reputation, but they did. I've used them before, and as long as you use uh, standard decaling practices, uh, using gloss coats, uh, you know, and solutions, you shouldn't have any trouble with them. But uh, but I do know that several modelers do not like Techmont decals. But I I personally. I've never had a problem with them. Um, I use, uh, I do gloss coats though. So um, if you're one of those people who just hates gloss coats, you might want to consider these decals might not be your best friend. But it comes with four, or no, it comes with two sets of stencils. Two sets of stencils, two sets, I thought I had four, it has two. Two sets of stencils. So basically you can build two aircraft from each one of these decal sheets. However, they only give you one model. But, uh, Having the extra stencils will be cool. I mean, maybe you'll build a, a you know, a Tamea P51D, and now you'll have some extra stencils for it. So uh, this is really cool. the The decals are printed very well. They they're on registry. They have good coloring. Very good decals. Unlike Edward decals, which suck terribly. These are really really good. So this model looks like it's going to be a ton of fun to build, and it actually looks like it's going to be pretty easy to build. Um, and the best part about it is it's super detailed. It's not it's not a it's not a slammer that you just you know paint and hope people stay three feet away from it. The detail on this will invite people to have a look. I mean, it even has a correct tail bay. This is an incredible model. Anyway, that's my review of the uh, Arma Hobby 132nd or 132nd. The Arma Hobby 172nd scale uh, P51B. And so my next efforts will be actually putting it together. And thank you for paying attention. Talk to you guys later.